today we're gonna to be diving into what I feel has been my probably most powerful tool to not success, but fulfillment. I almost wanna strike the word success from my vocabulary and I'm gonna share why. But that strategy, that tool is the importance of fun. It's literally about having fun. And I wanna start here when we think about fun by actually talking about core wounds, limiting beliefs. And you're like, Rebecca, what does having a core wound of I'm not enough have anything to do with fun? And it has everything. Welcome back to another episode of the Becoming You podcast. And I am fresh back from Weekend at the Pitch Club, which I always say is my favorite weekend of the year. The reality is it's like one of my favorite weekends of my life. And yes, there's like inspiration and I get to see some of my favorite people in the world, but it's also because I have so much fun. Not enough sleep, but so much fun. And today we're going to be diving into what I feel has been my probably most powerful tool to not success, but fulfillment. I almost want to strike the word success from my vocabulary and I'm going to share why. But that strategy, that tool is the importance of fun. It's literally about having fun. And I want to start here when we think about fun by actually talking about core wounds, limiting beliefs. And you're like, Rebecca, what does having a core wound of I'm not enough have anything to do with fun? And it has everything. So if you are aware of what your limiting belief is, sometimes it's not enough. Sometimes there's something wrong with me. My limiting belief growing up was I can't win. I can't win. I always felt like if I played by the rules, which I, I did, I tended to play by the rules, that the rules would get changed, that I would do the thing that I was supposed to do. And then someone that had power over me, a parental figure, a teacher, a coach would change the rules and I would somehow lose. Now, obviously this is a very disempowering belief. And there were times in my life that I have absolutely broken the rules or bent the rules or gotten creative with the rules because if I could see from the get-go, I couldn't win anyway then why not? Why wouldn't I try to stack the deck for me? And I, I realized that in this limiting belief of I can't win, the more successful, you know, the, the definition of successful, the more I did well in my career, the more money I made, the more I felt exposed in this belief. And so why I'm sharing this is this impacted me for, I mean, my entire life. I, I literally, by the way, only really learned that I had this belief in the last six months. And no matter how successful I became, no matter how much money I made, no matter what awards I went for or won, because I had this limiting belief, I didn't feel truly embodied. I would feel ungrateful because I had this abundant life, but I wanted to run away from it. I can remember sitting in my driveway at 26 and I was like, I am the number one salesperson and I'm custom building this beautiful home. And I literally wanted to run away from all of it. And I was like, something is wrong with me because why wouldn't I want all these things that people are setting goals for and I'm achieving them and they're not making me happy. And, and that's the reality, right? Of life is when we think that we're going to become happy because we have something and that have allows us to do something and then we'll feel a certain way. Like the reality is, is when we're chasing the thing or the achievement, it rarely allows us to feel the, we want, the way that we want to feel. Or if we do, it's not for very long. So I had this epiphany that came up late May of this year of 2024. And even though I knew that sometimes that would come up, the I can't win, I was in a deep spiritual dive. Let's be real. I told you I was going to be really real. In fact, speaking of realness, I'm like, I told my, uh, my team today, I was doing a photo shoot. It was so fun. I was like, I'm like, I'm 50% fancy on a good day with a stylist and a makeup artist, 50% fancy, 50% fun, but I want to be hundred percent real. And so on this day, I was doing my second plant medicine journey. For those of you who have not done it and you're like, why is she calling this a journey or a ceremony? It's because you are not doing this, you know, in the same way you take a shot of tequila to feel good or to have fun or to let loose. Like this is something you think about and you plan for for months and you set an intention behind and you, you really go into it to get clarity on things. And if you haven't and you're judging it, that's okay. I did too, to be fair, um, until I was really ready for it. But that night, um, my second one, I said, I could feel that I, I felt like I needed to throw up. And in my first ceremony or journey, I did not throw up. I said, I don't want to see demons. I don't want to throw up. I want clarity. I don't want to see anything that's not there. And I didn't. It was, it was massively 
useful for going inside. But on the second journey, I went a lot deeper and I all of a sudden felt like, oh my gosh, I'm going to throw up. I'm going to throw up. I really don't like throwing up. I'm that person that like fights it. Like, please don't throw up. So I go into the bathroom and I remember sitting there on like my kid's stool with my head in the bowl. And I realized in that moment, I mean, I was still you know, very lucid. And I said, there is something that my body needs to release. There is a belief like, and I was having this conversation with myself of what is it? What do you need to let go of? What is holding you back? What are you re- willing to like literally vomit up, expel, expunge, like remove from your body and your belief? And all of a sudden what came up is I can't win. I can't win. And this conversation, I feel like was like my ego having a conversation with my soul. My soul said, Rebecca, look at you. Look at your life. You are married to like the most incredible man. You have a healthy marriage. I mean, it takes work, but like you have a healthy marriage. You have healthy, beautiful children who are loving and wonderful. And again, there are kids also, right? You've got these beautiful women that are your dearest friends who you've Like I let have let them see to the depths of my soul and they love me still the good, the bad, all of it. And you have a business that you love. And I was in a space of kind of reworking parts of my business, my life, but I'm looking at my life and not just the exterior, but like from within, I'm like, there's so many beautiful things. How could there be a story that you can't win? You are winning. And then I said, well, wait a second. If there's a story that I can't win, I need to rewrite the rules. I need to rewrite the rules so that I can win. And I said, no, in the game I'm playing, there's no winning or losing. I don't believe anyone has to lose. And I started thinking about this idea of like playing the game, right? The game, the game of life, the game of whatever you want to call it, growth. And when I got rid of the, I can't win, I got rid of the idea that anybody has to lose. What came through so clearly to me is that I'm playing small, but I'm playing small Because I literally was playing such a small percentage of my life. I'm playing small because I'm literally playing small. And for so much of my life, outside of maybe being a child, I got conditioned and patterned to think that I had to earn my play. I had to earn my fun. It was like sitting at a table and your adult says, you're going to eat all of these vegetables. You're going to gag them down, even if you hate them, before you get to have dessert. And it's like, This moment of, if you're not playing, what's the point? Especially for me as an Enneagram seven, like as the enthusiast, like I'm driven by fun and curiosity and play. And that night I made this vow to myself to be more in play, more in fun. Now, this wasn't necessarily like a new concept. It was really just that I felt so embodied and wow, I can really see the contrast when I'm not playing, when I'm doing all the things and things look really good, but I'm feeling like I'm flatlining inside. And when I look back to the times of my life that I've been really the most fulfilled, the most abundant, it's been the times that I'm playing, the times that I'm having fun because the more fun it feels, the easier more in flow. Now, I don't mean that everything is going to be easy. It's not, right? Often we have to learn things that aren't necessarily the most fun thing, but on the other side, it creates a lot more space for fun. Think about prospecting. I used to teach this in sales. I used to teach this when I was in network marketing and people would be like, where do I find people? I'm like, people are all around us. It's not the issue of finding people or connecting with people. It's what energy are you in when you're connecting with them? And I used to say, what is, what are the things you want to learn? Like, do you love hiking or gardening or amazing races? Or like, what are the things that you consider to be fun? Go join a meetup or a group or something that is doing those things. Because if you're showing up, doing the thing that lights you up, doing the thing that feels like fun, what's going to happen is you're going to show up in your most magnetic energy. You're going to show up the most full, shiny, in-flow version of yourself. And that is the energy of attraction. Like the energy of play, the energy of celebration is the energy of yes in sales. So I want to give you an actual framework because I know it sounds really easy to say like, focus on playing bigger, focus on playing more, focus on what lights you up. But like, how do you do that when we've spent decades, you know, maybe our entire adult life programmed to do something completely different, programmed to think that we have to earn it or deserve it. And we are literally earning and deserving it by being on earth. So here is my playbook. And I built this a few years ago. And I obviously have been much more committed in the last six months to honoring the playbook, 
But this is a tool that I came to me, I should say, in breath work at a time in my life and in my business that I was really flatlining. I was looking at everything and I'm like, things are going well, but it feels hard. I feel like I'm grinding. I am, I have no space. And I just really, I was just struggling. I just was flatlining in my passion. Like if, if you would have seen a, you know, thermometer of success, it was looking pretty good. But if you would have seen a thermometer of like how excited I am about waking up each day to do all the things, it was pretty low. And when I realized that flatlining, what, what came to me is what do you do when you're flatlining at the hospital? They do CPR on you. They hook you up to the machine and jolt you with electricity, right? They like literally jolt you. So CPR for me stands for creativity, play, and restoration. And Please understand this is not just an exercise. You you can go and you write this down. I'm actually going to give you a tool, a course, a mini course um, that I designed with these. So feel free to write them down or you can go download it on my website or in the show notes. And I'm for now calling it the balance blueprint with the disclaimer that there's no real such thing as balance, but this is really about like finding the joy in the journey. But this is not just an exercise. I found for me, this was like a really, it was a profound awakening. It was a awakening to the power of infusing our life with vibrancy and vitality from stepping into our creativity, from indulging in play and exploration and embracing rejuvenation or restoration. And in this like trifecta, the sacred trifecta where creativity isn't just an option, but it's like a building block. It's the antidote to burnout. It's this key to unlocking like our best selves, our best leaders. And it's also the heartbeat to a thriving, joy-filled existence or business or relationship. So let's start with creativity, right? Creativity is literally how you can create those creative sparks is ask yourself what activities ignite your creative fire. Is it some people like to listen to music? I love to make playlists. I never made a playlist until I was in my forties. Now I love to do it for breath work. Is it engaging in dance? Is it, you know, maybe the way that you feel after a really funny show, like list what really makes you feel creative outside of the box. And by the way, you don't have to go take a course or like dive in with a lot of time and money to do these things. Look at like what makes you feel micro creative. When I go buy flowers from the farmer's market, first of all, just being at the farmer's market makes me feel creative. I go buy flowers, I get home and I cut them and I arrange them. I have not taken a class, but there's something about like touching the plants and figuring out where in my house is this going to look nice. It just makes me feel creative. So what makes you feel creative? And sometimes it's the areas that we maybe have a natural inclination. And sometimes it's the areas that I'm like, I would love to learn that. And I am really not good at it. This would be fashion styling right now. That's why I work with a stylist. Thank you, Abby Young. But what makes you feel creative? And what rituals can you incorporate into your life? Like just a couple of things. Maybe they're daily. Honestly, for me, I have all this woo-woo different spray. Like I've got sage spray and a wake spray. They're, you know, essential oil spray. Some of them have sage in them or I don't crystals in the bottom and just getting up and like spraying myself. It just feels creative. I feel like I'm like unlocking myself into a little more play, a little more creativity. So what for you, whether it's in the morning, maybe it's turning on a song and dancing with your kids. Maybe it's a podcast that makes you feel creative, but how can you make creativity a non-negotiable? Now, step two, the P the prioritizing play, right? How can we play bigger? And everyone's idea of play is going to look different and it can change over time. I, I typically revise my CPR list quarterly because my mood for play can change depending on the season, depending on what I've been doing recently, but this could be something from board games to maybe it's like walking in nature. You walk with your kids, you're probably going to skip. So again, compile a list of the things that feel playful. Like for me today, we did a photo shoot and it feels like play. I was smiling so hard. I was telling the ladies, I'm like, I'm not going to eat tomorrow because my jaw is hurting from like ear to ear from like the smiling and the laughing. Think about the moments that just make you lose track of time and schedule it in. Again, done beats perfect. This doesn't need to be like every day I'm creating an hour of play, but how can you have this play menu, this joy menu already ready? So in times you're like, I'm feeling a little burnt out. What can you do? to welcome in play, to nurture our inner child, to spark joy. Because I will tell you, I spent years doing what I try not to do to my kids, which is when they're saying like, hey, mom, I want to play. I'm not saying wait a minute or an hour or a day. 
Because what happens if you're a parent, you know what happens when you keep putting your kids off, they're going to start to act out. And that's exactly what our inner children are doing as well. And then the last, and yes, Enneagram 7 with a short sleep gene, I am gotten much better about this since becoming a mom, but is embracing restoration, is asking yourself, what are the activities that leave you feeling renewed, refreshed? Like, is that yoga? Is that reading? Is that meditation? Like, is it, again, time in nature? And create those rituals, those practices. And I think those are some of the most important, the restoration, because you could fill your calendar with creativity. You could fill it with play and not have downtime to just rest, right? Again, weekly, daily. And so I did this exercise with my husband and here's what you'll start to find is you may have parts that overlap. Like for me, creativity is planning vacations. The play and the restoration is actually doing the vacations. So for me, that's a sign like travel is a really important part of my life. It fills all of my categories. My husband, um, he has built this little tiny house kind of off the grid and he like wrote that down. He's like, the creativity is planning the things he's going to do. And then actually like building them, like putting in solar, getting water to the tiny house, like all of these very off the grid activities, but it's also his play and being out there where there's no one around. I mean, now we have Wi-Fi, but theoretically like it's, you know, there's no noise, there's no traffic, there's no pollution. It feels like restoration. It's like in nature where, you know, the bobcats come up. I think we've seen a bear on our, on our security camera up there. So those for him are all of them. And when we realized that, when I did this exercise with them, I said, how can we get you there more? How can we fulfill all of these things? Because when he goes there, it's like it recharges his soul. So for you, what are those things? Look at your list, the CPNR, and identify where are those overlap opportunities between creativity, play, and restoration. You know, dancing could feel playful and creative. Meditation could be restorative and feel, make you feel creative. Like that's why I love breath work. It's restorative and it makes me feel really creative. And intentionally build in a new routine. Plan in your days, your weeks, your months with those activities. Because by intentionally building it in, right, we, we, one, we open ourselves up to a lot more joy and passion and balance, dare I say it. But this is not an exercise about like do, do, do. This is literally about how does this allow you to be wonderfully, vibrantly, like authentically you and authentically alive. And it infuses more life into every moment. Or it infuses them in intentionally so every moment is a little fuller. But one thing to let you know, free time is not the same necessarily as fun. They don't have to be the same thing. So I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to schedule in my creativity or my play or my restoration. I'm just going to leave blocks free, but you're not always going to feel creative literally, or you're not going to always feel in the mode or the mood. So don't be afraid to schedule some of these things in. It's kind of like when you... You're like, I didn't even remember I scheduled in a massage, but man, that former version of myself, that's like, wow, you have a really crazy week and you put a massage on Sunday to like recharge for the week. You really thank yourself. So build this in. You will thank yourself. You won't feel flatlined. And if you do, you know exactly what to do about it. And most importantly, most importantly, this is all about leaving room for magic, like leaving room and planning it in. So share with me. I want to hear like, how does this show up for you. How are you planning in more CPR? And again, go to the show notes, go to my website, download a free version of the balanced blueprint. And I can't wait to see how you are creating more creativity, play, and joy in your life.